three, two. <laughs> Today I want to talk to you about the Holy Spirit. <laughs> In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. Do you see that? Do you see that? It's possible I'm having an obsessive compulsive moment. Do you feel that? That's what I experience all the time. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind. <laughs> and there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues. <laughs> Have you ever just wanted to make the sound of a goat? <laughs> no, there's no such thing as a holy goat. What role does the Holy Spirit have in my life? Why do I need the Holy Spirit? None of that makes sense. Here's the deal. In the very beginning of the Bible, there's the Spirit. In the very middle of the Bible, there's the Spirit. And then in the very end of the Bible, there's the Spirit. Jesus Christ comes and he says when he's getting ready to ascend, he's going to send the Comforter. And the Holy Spirit comes. And the Holy Spirit rushes down on that early church, fills them. And then they go out filled with incredible passion of fire. And they share the good news of who Jesus is and what he's done. The Spirit of the Lord is inside of us. And it cries out, Abba, Father, Daddy, the Spirit of the Lord. Why why do we need the Spirit? What is the Spirit? The Spirit of God is given to you and I so that we can look at God, know God, and love God. What will that love look like? Well, for you, it might be something as simple as saying yes to your mom and dad when they ask you to do something. Or it might be an opportunity for you to assist somebody who's struggling academically. Or it might be something amazing like going down to a soup kitchen and feeding people that are hungry and giving drink to people who are thirsty. See, you and I have all sorts of moments all day long where we can be sacrificial, where we can be people of self-donation. When we do that, we imitate and model in time the love of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the Blessed Trinity. And the Holy Spirit wants to come into your life, blow into your life, do something amazing in your life. That's what happens at baptism. We are filled with the Spirit. We're born again. It's incredible. The old is gone, the new has come. At confirmation, we renew our baptismal promises and the Holy Spirit rushes into our life, flows into our life, and enables us to become a great evangelizer, just going out and spreading the good news. The Spirit of God is given to you so that you can be that person of complete gift. When Jesus gives himself completely to the Father and the love of the Holy Spirit at Calvary, it changes the world. When you give your love to others, when you share yourself, when you sacrifice and serve other people, that's the Spirit of God working in your life. What are you waiting for? You're filled with the Spirit. And while you might not speak in tongues, you still have the chance to go out and change people's lives forever.